All right, you guys, so we are continuing on. As of right now, you should have your two pinch pots put together into that sphere or oval or whatever you've got going on for your particular um, Claydonian, whatever, whatever it may look like, okay? Um, remember, we wanna definitely make sure that before we start building any further, that we have got our front view and our side view drawn out. We've got it labeled as far as like how we're building each part of it, pinch pot, slabs, coils, that kind of stuff, and then how it's going to move and attack if it were to come to life, okay? So we wanna make sure we have that all solidly ready to go. Um, so I am making this Claydonian, remaking really, this Claydonian here. I've made it once, it broke, so now I'm gonna make another one. Um, so, so far I have got the start of the two pinch pots for the head. And as you can see, I've already got one ear attached on there, but I'm gonna show you guys the, the next two uh, types of building techniques for our clay. Um, so the next one I'm gonna show you guys um, is the slab, okay? So the slab, remember, is kinda like when you roll up cookie dough. So, some of you may have an actual rolling pin at your house. You could use that, it's a little big. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe the adult at your house is like, I don't really want you using this on clay when it's meant for food. I mean, this is non-toxic clay, so really if you wash this off afterwards, it should be fine, but um, I also understand maybe wanting to keep those things separate. So, but it's not a big deal because really all of the things that we're doing with this project, you can find things around the house um, for that. So for, for starts, I guess, let's just start from the beginning of how to make a slab. First thing you're gonna wanna do is kinda smush some clay after you've kneaded it and warmed up, got it ready, right? Um, between our hands like that. Now you can see that this is, is not great. You can see like the ridges from my hands in there and it's indented and not looking great. We want it to all be like really nice and consistently flat, about a quarter of an inch thick. So look around your house. Um, I think what works best and most people probably have access to is cardboard. So I just took a piece of cardboard and I cut it into two chunks like this um, that are gonna go on either side of my piece of clay and they're about a quarter of an inch thick. If you want it a little thicker, you could just tape two of them together and get a little bit thicker chunk of clay. Just depends, right? Like it's gonna depend on your, your drawing, your Claydonian. Um, if it's holding up the weight of your Claydonian, we might need it to be thicker. For this particular instance, uh, the ear, it doesn't need to be that thick. So I'm gonna keep it just one, one thickness of cardboard. Um, so now as far as rolling it out, um, what to use, right? Maybe I don't have a rolling pin or maybe my family doesn't want me to use it. Well, you could just use a Sharpie. That'll work. You could use, what else did I find? Oh, I found this like candle, plastic candlestick thing. There we go, that could work. Uh, I also found some hand sanitizer. That work. Do you see how like you guys can literally use just about anything? Another thing that came with your um, art kits, brayer, so you could use that too. Um, my prayer is a little bit narrow. It's not super wide, so but it will work for this piece because I also don't need this piece to be super wide either. So I just got my um, cardboard on either side and I am rolling it out like that. Okay, so now that I've got it rolled out, this is why we want to do this on like parchment or um, wax paper because look at how easy that peels off and then it's like nice and smooth. Whereas if I had done that on my... Um, desktop or tabletop, it's probably going to stick a little bit more. So it is nice having it um, be able to come and come off and release a little bit easier. So now I want to make another ear similar to the one that I've got here. Um, once again, you guys, like random tools are going to work. I have been really enjoying using this corn cob poker thing for building my Claydonian. I mean, but really anything that's kind of sharp is going to work for this. Um, so I'm just going to draw the shape, the basic shape of that ear, really lightly at first. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me hold it up a little closer for you. So you can see I kind of lightly drew the shape in. Now each time that I make a pass, I'm gonna just push it in a little bit further to cut a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, until I get all the way through. It tends to work better if you go little by little rather than trying to uh, force it all the way to the bottom on the first try because then you tend to get more of those like little bits that chunks that come out so we don't want that so little by little and I'm almost all the way through 
the clay there. There we go. And boom, it's released. Now it's not going to look perfect right away, but that's okay. Just take your fingers and smooth it out, right? Okay, so now I've got my ear pretty much ready to go. So just like yesterday when we put our two pinch pots together, we scored it, right? Like we made little scratches in it. And the reason we do that, like if I have two smooth pieces, so this is a smooth piece right here. This is smooth. If I just put this like that, it'll stick. Not super well though. So I want you to imagine, um, so here's a smooth edge. Here's a smooth edge. When those two pieces or edges go together, there's not really anything holding it very well. So now if somebody took uh, each of my arms and tried pulling my hands apart, it, they're gonna come apart pretty easily, right? Like I can use my muscles and try to hold it together, but if somebody was pulling on each arm, it would be able to be released pretty easy. Now I want you to imagine if, so there's those scratches in the clay, right? So it's now like uneven and rigid. So it's kind of like when those scratched pieces go together, it kind of goes like this. So now it's gonna be much harder for those things to be pulled apart. So that is why we want to, when we're putting two pieces of clay together, just take the little extra step to score them, to put scratches in them, just like this, okay? So I'm just giving it a little bit more texture, a little bit more something to hold on to. Oh, and actually I want that more, I forgot, it's more on the side. That's why we gotta look at our, our pictures. My ears aren't really on top, they're more to the side, and I gotta save some room for those horns as well. Are they called horns on a giraffe? Antlers? I don't really know. Whatever they are, I gotta save room for them. So now that I've got both sides scored, I'm going to stick that on there. And then, you know, whatever tool you're choosing to use, once again, I've been loving this corn cob poker thingy. It's been working really well. So it's gonna get ugly before it gets pretty. I need to make sure that both pieces of clay are gonna stick together well. So I really need to make sure that it's holding tight while also not caving in, because these are pinch pots, they're hollow. So I gotta be really careful about that too. Um, so I'm gonna put it together and then of course I would smooth it out and just kind of perfect it however I want that to look, all right? So that is our slab. Now we're off to the easiest one. So we did pinch pots last time. We've done slab just now and I can have my slab, it might be like this where it sticks out. It might be a slab, if you guys can see this, this um, snout area would also be made out of slab, but that, the whole thing would be actually be stuck right to it, it wouldn't be sticking out. Um, so you can use slabs for a ton of things on your Claydonian. But the last building technique I'm gonna show you guys is called a coil, and I think it's the easiest of all three of them. So with this one, I'm gonna start by just kinda squishing it in my hand to start making it into like an ob oblong shape like that. But look how terrible that is, you guys. <laughs> like, that looks awful. We do not wanna be able to see all those ridges from our fingers and in between. It doesn't look good. So we are gonna roll it out on this surface. And when we roll it out, you wanna use the fatty part of your hand, like this part. Don't use here, you can feel the ridges. It's not gonna turn out as smooth. You definitely do not wanna be using your fingers. You're gonna end up with something that looks like that. Not, not desirable, okay? We want it to be nice and even and smooth. So when I put my clay down here, once again, I'm gonna have this part of my hand, like even look how my fingers are like off of the, um, the ground there, the, the tabletop. So rolling it, I'm gonna go back, whoops. Roll up our sleeves apparently. Rolling it back and forth, and the harder I press down, and the longer I roll it for, the skinnier it is going to get. So you're just gonna have to kind of decide once it looks how you want it to. I'm actually gonna cut off a chunk here. I don't need it quite that long. And it was just getting in my way. So, rolling it out a bit more. Because I'm going to use this for the horn antler things that are at the top of the giraffe. But anyway, we get a nice, more even and consistent look to it once we use that part of our hand. So once again, once we've got our coil done, just cut it to... That was not the best cut. You might want to use a knife for this. 
But anyway, once I've got it, I would shape it into however I want it to look. And then of course I would make sure to score the edges here and score the edges here, wherever it's going to be attached. Put it on there. I'd probably make that a little shorter. And then of course, making sure it's all smoothed and into place. So now that you have our, your three techniques, right? We've got our, our pinch pots, our slabs, our coils. Now that you know how to do all three of those, we're ready to start building and you've got a few days to do that. Um, so keep, keep me posted, of course, if you have any questions along the way. Um, but now it's building time, so have some fun. Remember, if you don't have the colors that you want, it's not that big of a deal. We're gonna have a couple days to paint these after they're baked. Um, so just, you know, as long as we're building it the way we want it to, we can always make it, give the finishing touches by painting it the colors we want later on. All right, guys. Oh, sorry, one other thing. Don't forget, we wanna put a hole in this at some point, the pinch pots, I'll remind you guys of that later. Um, but I'm still gonna build my eyes on top of here and I'm actually going to use um, the pupils as a spot to put the holes in mine. But some people just choose to put it somewhere where it's kind of hidden. Um, but just to make sure that there aren't any issues with it breaking later on, we wanna have that, be able to exchange air in and out. So just a reminder, of that as well at some point we do want to make sure we've got the, the holes in the pinch butts before we put it in the oven to bake all right guys have a good one